Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, boys, to have you um, a chance to speak to both of you is a privilege for me because I I know Toddy always backs this down, but I always give you your flowers, to be honest. Um, without you, I don't know if I'd be in the position where I am right now. Um, we're being the three of us. You know, I think this is the first time you guys have got an opportunity to actually speak. Instead of talking to a person who hosts the show, you're actually speaking to a friend. And um, for me, you two guys are real special. We've been real, real close for years and years and years. And just to see this is the one part that really I want to talk about is just how I know you've spoken at length, both of you, on how you've transformed your lives. Um, I'm a guy that that is still battling addiction and – you know, seeing you two always, I, I'm trying to put this in the right way, um, makes me believe that I can actually do it because I'm going to be straight out and honest to you. I, I don't believe that when you, I, I've seen you guys at your worst and I don't think I was ever that bad. Mm. But then I look at I'm still going and you've managed to find a way out. And so then when you draw the param parameters on what's bad and what's not it almost becomes an illusion I must I, you know I've just been fooling myself for years and years and years and years and to come to a point where like I'm 57 and own very little and have been a victim of this and probably you know as you both know that I suffered badly with mental health and my addiction is probably a primary cause of that as well besides the the, the childhood trauma that I've had the question I wanted to put to you is that I'm trying at the moment. I really am mm. in the last and since Junior's come back to Australia and you showing me evidence that you're for real, for real, mm. because I hear heaps of people that always are going to do it and then you see them four months later and they're back to where they were before. And that's no disrespect on them because addiction is fucking hard to beat. Yeah. You know, trying to cut that cord that draws you back is hard. And this is what I'm about to say now. Like, I'm trying now really hard. And on Sunday, for example, this Sunday that just went past, I had no one to hang with. My my wife hangs with, looks after her father all day and sits in the house. I refuse to just sit there. My life's still got to go on and, and I respect Leanne for doing that. So I don't really have much... Um, I don't have a social circle. Most of the guys that I have that are around me are very young and probably got their own misses or things to do. The only thing that I felt like I wanted to do was just go and have a bet or just to pass the time. Mm. I, I, from, from, from your guys' perspective, I want to know, do you ever begrudge this? Because I, I, even if I stop gambling tomorrow, right, I will never begrudge what I got, what I did before in the past because it, I, I, I'm, I must have enjoyed it. There is still an enjoyment factor of it. I'm not justifying it for one second that, mm. you know, we go back to it and do it again or even think of contemplating for it because I haven't got to a point where you are so far down the track where you can say, and I can see the difference in you. Mm. I physically as a friend, I'm not saying that this is not a show. I don't yeah. have to put this on. I can physically see the difference in the two of you. I hear you. I, I see you. But I, I'm, I'm asking you for advice mm. in the times of temptation. Yeah, I guess, like you said, you mentioned at the start that you, you've seen, I'll speak on myself, you've seen me in the, the highs of, of how bad I got um, through living in, in your own house. Um, you witnessed it um, through many occasions. Um, and you also said that... Um, I was more deeper than you have ever been, which is probably true. And that's where I've probably had to come to the realisation that it was time to give it up, where yours hasn't affected you as much as it has affected me. Your gambling to my drinking has affected you as, as much as it has affected me in my life. Obviously, you've, you've been there in three clubs that have been – or two clubs have been sacked from, uh, which is probably the most, most obviously publicised. But then you see me in the middle of – the breakup with Susie and, and losing my son for well, calling myself a 50-50 father. So you've seen parts of that. So that there had to be a wake-up call for me to, to to get help. And obviously when I rang you and said I was going to rehab, like that that was a – that's not a cry out for help but it's also a thing to say, well, I'm, I'm making a, a stand here that if 
I need to tell people and I told the people closest to me that what I was doing so that when I did come out of that place that I had support but also had accountability accountability, and that's why I'm, I'm happy to speak about it. And about begrudging alcohol, like I had the best times of my life drinking alcohol. I've, I've, I've had the best moments. I've had some fun times but I've had some horrible times. But now that I don't drink in, in the last 14 months, the things that's come to me has outweighed the good things that I had when I was in them times because life's changing for me. People say that it will change for the better and when at first for me, I used to say to people, there's no way it can change that much better. Like life without alcohol, it can't change too much but I'm I'm living proof that it changes immensely especially if, if alcohol is a part of your life that you thought was normal. And I only started to realize that I wasn't normal in that area until when Susie brought it up to me because my mum understood what I was doing but she didn't see an issue with it because she was around it. Um, Obviously, my dad was similar but also she understood what it was like as a footballer and stuff like that or as a sports person or just how it was. Susie wasn't brought up around it where then she started to see me and she would say to me, the way you act with your mates is not normal. Okay, but then, so if I was to ask you, Junior, would you, like Todd said, um, the highs and lows, right, would you relate it to like a a toxic relationship? Like you get these highs and lows and where you can say to me now, you know, I actually just found a person where I don't get these highs and lows anymore but I just get a steady and it's I might miss the highs but... For the lows, I'll just take the even keel any day of the week. Yeah, well, I think Toddy said a really good point. I think for me, it's about prioritizing what's important in your life. And as an early 20-year-old into your your party days or or football career, it's very difficult to have that discipline to want to miss out on, as you just said, the highs and the lows. Um, And I suppose you accept that behavior as normal. You you put the, the good times on a pedestal. And as Toddy just said then, I'm not someone who stops drinking alcohol now and then looks back and says, everyone who drinks alcohol is a bad person. I had the best times of my life or some of the best times of my life drinking alcohol and celebrating and till the day I died, I'll always be remembered as some of my best moments. But the downfall to that was was negative. It was breakdowns in relationships. It was lack of form in football. Uh, it was moved. Which was going to be my next question yeah. well, to both of you. Sorry for interrupting. Do you think... Looking back, take that out of look how much you guys achieved in the game. Could you have achieved more? Well, for me, I always say like the penny didn't drop. Whenever I didn't drink alcohol, I'm a better person. I'm clearer. I'm more present. I'm a kinder person. I'm all of those positives. I'd like to think. I think people around me would say the same thing. Would you be a better player? Definitely, yeah. Would you? Well, it's it's evident. 2010, I didn't drink. Um, and it was my best year. I was like, I got the Dally M, but obviously it was on the back of a team effort. But then going back to you then, can I, uh, you said to me, or you just said just then before, that it was on, it wasn't until Susie said that the way you're acting is different. But I also got the sack from two clubs because I, I'm, you were loyal to me. You took me everywhere I went. Mm. And so when you go, I, I went. Mm. But people told us what we were doing back then wasn't normal either. Yeah, I was told by people way better footballers than me and, and when I was young, this was when I was younger, I had blokes at the, at the radar saying it's you, 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 alcohol and you don't mix, you should give it up. And at, at that time you, you need to make the decision for yourself and explore those avenues yourself. And, and that's a part of the addiction of alcohol. That you always say to yourself, oh, "Okay, I'll try one more. I'll, I'll have a time off it. I'll just drink light beer and stuff like that." It's a it's allergic reaction for me because once I have one, I want to have a hundred, and and I change. Um, and I guess for me, when I say about Susie saying that I acted different, well, I don't have, I don't didn't have rugby league to fall back on. I didn't have where, for me, on the back, and I'm honestly say that sometimes if. I was in trouble. I knew that I would always find a club. You can't live your life finding new partners and new kids. But it's almost a contradictory statement. You're saying, how did you know you'd always find a new club? You still were playing good football whether you, when, while you were on alcohol. You both were. 
Well, that's right. And then for, for me to turn around and say, well, if I didn't drink, I would have been the best player in the world. That's silly. But it also, it would have, it would have, I probably would have stayed at Canberra. I would have played over 300 games at Canberra and be still living in Canberra. I wouldn't have experienced, I wouldn't have been out to sit here with you. I wouldn't have never met you. I would never have met Mitch. Yeah. I would have met Mitch on a playing level. I would have met you passing by watching you on Instagram. Yeah. Like, so what life's given me from drinking, yes, the negative, but that not saying life's given me this because of or because I drank, but the things that happened in my career made forced me to leave Canberra. For me as a kid, I never wanted to leave Canberra. I grew up idolizing Canberra from a four year old to still now. I have a soft spot for Canberra, so I was never going to leave that club unless I got flicked, which I did, which was the cause of alcohol. So. For, for me to look back on it all, nothing, nothing happens in my life negative if I don't drink. But also change doesn't happen either. Like for me, the change in the last 14 months is, is massive. Oh. You, like it's, And I'm not just saying it because I'm on this podcast or that we're making content. The change to both of you has been for me mind-blowing. I'm being honest, swear my life, it's been mind-blowing. It's given me the inspiration to want to be better. The thing is too, Roger, and I was saying, I think there's a, someone told me advice, I think it was when I went to rehab or um, just outside of it, and they said that the devil never goes away. And in my heart, I truly believe that. The better you feel sometimes in a relationship, in football, in business, when things are manifesting for you, the devil's not far away to try and get you off, off guard. And I think it's important for people to know that because it's not as if you get to a place and you go, oh, life's perfect. Usually in your best times or when things are starting to go for you, there's a dark thing coming around the corner to distract you. I think that's just the way life is. And you've got to be aware of that. And I think one thing I'm learning now that if you give into these weak moments, you go 50 steps back. If you, st- if you show strength in relationships, in business, in work, through those times, you take 10 steps forward. And I think that's what we're experiencing at the moment. 100%. I'm going to say this only because I love you and I'm do- talking to you directly. I'm going to – I hope you don't get offended by this, but I don't think rehab worked for you. No. I, f- I felt you only went to rehab because you had to go to rehab. Um, you were forced, you know, to show the public that you were m- addressing a, a situation um, where alternatively – on your perspective, football wasn't there anymore and you were fighting to save your marriage and, and your you had a purpose. Yeah, well, I think it's it's very different in different scenarios life but I think talking to Mitch now about his journey through rehab, it, it, it takes time to, to find out what you want. Like for me, I've tried sobriety and stuff before but never thought I would say that I will never drink again but – that that in Hinning's time in rehab, he would have got planted seeds. But mine, I had mine was rehab or bust. You couldn't have said anything yeah. better. Mine's rehab or bust for me. If I if I chose to go back and drink alcohol again, I might as well just end end it now because it's not. There's no option for me to because how far far it's grown. But but on your stuff, Rog, you talk about addiction with gambling stuff. You've also got a clinical. To, to clinical depression, yeah, yeah. so you're fighting two battles, yeah. and and if and if gambling stops that depression, well, it's it's hard to beat. I drank alcohol just because I enjoyed it and I thought it was fun. You gamble sometimes, probably now, to get rid of your depression. Yeah. So you're fighting two things like at one side you're really good, and then your depression pops up. Your, your depression pops down. The next minute, addiction pops up of so gambling. True. So they fight each other. So you need to find a balance in between what one's going to help with. With depression, sometimes it's medication or other things. But then, yes, the gambling. If you have a win, sometimes you probably get a win, and you, you just you chase it again. So you, you get the next high from that next thing. So you, they bound off each other. You couldn't have said it better. It's catastrophic. It's like when I get to a position where like I've had four or five bad days in a row, the only way I look at trying to get a relief or just to escape myself is to do something where I don't have to think about myself. And then if I lose, it then becomes tenfold because then you overthink it and overthink it and overthink it. But also when you lose, it gives you the the right to, to be depressed. Yeah. Because I've just lost ten thousand yeah. dollars. Okay, well I'm going to be depressed. And if someone yeah. says, "Why are you depressed, Rog?" Yeah, you Your answer is, "I've just lost ten thousand dollars." Wouldn't you be? Yeah. No, well it's not poor Rog there. It yeah. should be. Well, I shouldn't have gambled anyway. I shouldn't have done something. Um, 
but the, you do it sometimes for justification. I yeah. used to play, like when I play at Byron. Yeah. Not now because I'm in a different place, but I played footy for justification sometimes to go, okay, I finish football on Sunday. I'm allowed to drink till Monday. Yeah. Well, who's stopping me? Well, I was like a little kid. A I'm allowed to have a beer because I just played footy. It's like That's what I've always done. What about you, Mitch? Do you ever, did you have times where you were tempted? To go back yeah. to drink. To have a to what about when you go out or I had a weird epiphany. I, I was actually with Toddy the night I stopped drinking alcohol. I remember the night perfectly. Yeah. And um I just But it, I, I'm, <sighs> what I'm trying to ask you, surely there's been some temptations from then. Or uh, has it just been like, fuck, I've learnt my lesson? I think what Toddy said is it's 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 gotta be a, a light bulb moment of a priority of what's more important. And obviously, like Toddy said, when you go to a rehab or you see a counsellor or you get different advice, which happens plenty of times once you get to 35 years of, of age, you've had plenty of different words of wisdom from lots of people. Sometimes the, the penny just drops and you go, oh, that actually makes sense or I can relate to that now and maybe I want to start living like that. At the end of the day, it's it's your own choice how you want to live your life. Yeah, If, you're, if, if you want to live your life and drink alcohol to you, put in a pine box, good luck to you. Uh, if you don't want to drink, it's it's whatever works for the individual. So I've got no judgment to how people live their life. And like I said, I've had some of the best times in my life. But for my relationships, for my clarity in my mind to open up me being the best version of myself, it, it works better for me. And do I have regret that I didn't do it earlier? There's parts of me maybe that I would have been more consistent with football or other parts of my life. So I don't like looking at it as regret. It was just where I was at at that point in time. And at this point in time, this is working for me. No doubt. And I I just want to say, well, f finishing on this, just as a friend on both of you, you've been, you're inspiring to me because I can see it. It's right in front of my – I've seen everything. I've been with you guys for so long and I, I just say to myself, you can do it, I can do it too. Mm. And oh, I yeah, want to get there. And I believe that to everyone, but the penny has to drop. And, 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 and honestly, it's got to a point where I can actually see so much different and I am going to finish on this by saying, Mitch, what you just said there is so true about how you want to live your life. Like my brother who's 65, why would he want to stop rent drinking? What else has he got? I take that away from him. He probably dies. You know, he looks forward to that. He's got nothing else. I don't judge him on it. It's the way he's chosen to live life. Doesn't mean he's a bad person. He hasn't got long left. What is he going to do? So I respect that and I respect anybody. But I also know that I could potentially be, and you've shown it, such a even better than what I am and I think I've come a long way from where I used to be. For me, I've always aspired. I, don't, I, don't, I know how these two guys have played um, and being players – or footballers or anybody, everybody always potentially wants to be the best version of themselves and being great. I can fortunately say I don't care where it's up myself or not. I'm the best in my game when it comes to speed. There is absolutely no doubt. I work hard on that. If anything, that's the only thing probably I'm good at. I've always wondered what Todd Carney and Mitchell Pearce would do after they've been so dominant in the field of what they chose to do, which was play football. They dominated the game. Now they've gone into the media. They've offered, they're going to offer something else I think that I'm really curious about. I think that could be something that potentially I could slide myself into as well and we could really have a completely different outtake on athletic performance. Do you want to touch base a little bit, of guys, what you've got, to, got in mind? Yeah, Rog, um, and, and obviously that's why we've reached out because we believe that you, obviously you've got a platform and um, – a base there for us. Um, so since Mitch has returned from France and as you know, I've always done a um, bit of private coaching and just any position sort of coaching. Um, but since we've started doing some media stuff, there's obviously a lot of topic around um, the demand for the sixes and sevens in the game. Um, so we've been sort of put our heads together and we've come up with sort of a, a plan to, to to coach sixes and sevens. Um so I'm, I'm based on the Gold Coast. Mitch is based in Sydney. So over the next few months, we'll be planning um, how we base that here and the Gold Coast. So, Would you be looking at potentially like holiday school holiday programs? Yeah. Or? So our first one we're looking at is obviously if you um, here in Sydney and the Gold Coast, yeah. um, offering it to only sixes and sevens, which is some people go, you're crazy because a lot of kids will want to turn up. Um, but 
we just really want to focus ourselves on sixes and sevens and and then from that that camp we do um over the over a few days we'll do age groups over different days so a kid that's 12 can't be taught what a 17 year old where a lot of coaches will just teach the kid the same sort of things where we'll break it down and teach a 12 year old what they they need to be taught and where we'll teach a 17 year old what they need so excuse my ignorance but i do i i sort of agree a little bit that we are um going to make our audience a little smaller by just focusing focusing on just six and seven would a not could a nine also be included in that don't they play very similar six seven i mean i'm on the outside looking in i'm a speed coach is that an is that an unintelligent statement or they can but i never played nine mitch never really played nine Did, like, don't, don't they play a very similar type of role though or, or is it completely expand, different? i think for us to expand into all positions and, and obviously the spine, which is what you're talking about, six, seven, nine, one. But I think the idea around the six and seven stuff's mainly around coming through. We got so many good mentors, yep. you know, some of the greatest halfbacks before us while we were playing, coaches, a lot of specific stuff, uh, players that had the same love for the game that we did when we were coming through. And I put a lot of my uh, success or things I learned down to these guys more so than sometimes specific coaches um, they're the guys that invested more time into your development taught you all the little increases of, of, of our position and me and Toddy got a lot of knowledge in and around this and we want to give back as Toddy said to guys maybe before they get into systems in that early age that maturity where you've got to develop your most skills and it's the most information that goes into their their brains and if we can give back in, in holiday camps and then some other ideas down the track um we just think hearing all this talk about the lack of halves in the game, it hurts. No, I think it it's hurts. outstanding. Can I ask this again? Again, I think by me keeping asking these questions, the parents that will potentially look at this would also have their own kid in mind. I'm always being curious. Does a six and seven also have a kicking coach? Because they do a hell of a lot of it. Or is that just a skill acquisition? Or well, would that be something you would teach? Would that be something that you would try and tell? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if that goes down to the coach. When do you know when to kick or is that? Well, that that'll be broken down over the camp. So the first part of the camp will be a lot of fundamental skills and we'll, we'll, we'll go over kicking, we'll go over catch pass, we'll go over decision making. Um, we'll put, put scenarios for the older kids. We'll have different sort of formats of like scenarios of what they play and, and so to decision making. But the younger kids, yes, it starts at kicking and catching, passing. Yeah. Like they're the, they're the three main fundamentals, catch, pass and kick. If you can't do any of them three left and right footed or right handed, left and right pass, you've got to get better at them things before you can de develop on and, and go further. So that will be a big part of the, the components on the day. Um, obviously where you fit in, you need to be fast to be half. Yeah. Um, so it's exciting the way it's gonna oh, uh, the way I it's gonna look, but we want parents to come. Yeah, oh, definitely, and, and I encourage because that. Because at the end of the day, they're the one. You always refer to your dad how how often he used to take you down to the park. They actually can be the most influential coaches in your life because you're spending so much time with them all the time. They're the ones that, if they can take away what you're speaking, can well, reiterate it that to make sure that the practice. Because if you limit being great only to your clinics and don't take the tools away from you, then the chance of change is zero to none. Well, it's education, isn't it, Rog? Like Absolutely. a lot of those kids or parents don't get that access till they go into a Roosters or Melbourne or a system where they've got elite coaches that are teaching them. Same with your your specialty with, with speed. You're giving the knowledge to kids that haven't got that knowledge. Absolutely. So if we can give back to parents or 12-year-old kids, 13-year-old kids that are getting access to obviously players that have played at a high level in the halves, um, it'll allow their development to hopefully come quicker. And I think the thing for us is there's a lot of talk around the way kids are getting coached in the junior footy, a lot of it replicating how NRL players and it's, it's not allowing the, the young halves to develop. Yeah. So I think to that's let a free flow. They're being structured. Is that what you're saying? So hopefully we can give them a bit, bit of a pers different perspective on getting that creati creativity back in their game. And I think these, these, uh, these clinics will be a good start. Look, I, I'm going to tell you, it's a no-brainer. I'll let you understand – I'll finish on this note, unless the boys want to add anything else, I'll go back to them. I'm telling you from experience, I'm a lot older than these guys. I'm 57. And unfortunately, kids aren't allowed to be kids anymore. And I'm telling you this from experience. The simple fact that kids are now so young getting specialised training, 
doesn't allow them with these social media and telephones. There's so off, so often I would walk in the street and never see a kid jump out of a tree or just ride on a bike or, or be on a skateboard and just learn to be a kid. And unfortunately, whilst I want those implements to be put into place, it gets found out. You know when it gets found out? It gets found out when they go and try out for a footy team and all these other kids have been getting specialised training at such a young age and they can't make the team. And that's why, unfortunately or fortunately, these guys are going to offer a service like I offer a service, a specialised athleticism, which is an absolute no-brainer. You're going to get coached from two of the best in the game. They'll bring tricks that you've never, ever seen before. If you don't use it, again, I don't want your kid to be one of those kids that miss out.